Hi guys, I'm Alexandra and I'm a health and food blogger, so I have a YouTube channel where I inspire people to eat more plants. And I have a new Nikon Z30 vlogging camera and I need some help because I want to make the best content that you can make. So I reached out to Nikon and they sent me one of the Nikon trainers. So I usually take a lot of food photos for sure. my app and I usually take them from the bird view. Okay. And so what are the best settings on a camera if I want everything crisp and nice and clear? In sure. The are you handheld or are you using a tripod mostly? What do you tend to do? Mostly I do it handheld. To make sure you have a fast enough shutter speed to counteract any movement because you're shooting handheld based and you might be trying to kind of reach over a particular subject. We could easily go somewhere around about a hundredth of a second or maybe two hundredth of a second. The Probably the most important one is going to be your aperture setting. So when it comes to the aperture setting, if you've got a subject that's in front of you and that subject has quite an amount of depth, so if you've got fruit on a chopping board, for example, and you want to make sure that the whole piece of fruit is in focus, that's going to require a specific aperture setting. Yeah. The only other setting that I'd really worry about would be ISO. Hey, I had no idea that you can have auto ISO, but the rest manual. Yeah, it's like, the one, it's like a really easy way to yeah. shoot, right? So we all know that a cloud comes through and that light level changes. Yeah. Your ISO can then adjust to still give you the correct exposure. Does it matter where, from which height I hold the camera? Yes, so that's technically correct, because what you're doing is you're changing your distance to subject. But I would probably say that your distance to subject would be based on your composition. So when I'm vlogging, I usually want to take a photo. Like if I vlog food, I have a plate in my hand. I want to quickly like take a photo for a thumbnail or for Instagram. With previous cameras, there were cameras that were really good at video and there was cameras that were really good at stills. For this camera, there's a really nice little switch on the back of the camera. So newer cameras are much better at switching between video and stills and it makes it much easier for you to go from one to the other. And one more question, can I shoot my photos in RAW? Yeah, 100%. So this camera will let you shoot in RAW. You can also shoot in JPEG and RAW at the same time. So if you're in a situation where you wanted the convenience of a JPEG but you still want the quality of your RAW file, you can still do that. Usually I use the same settings, but I have to change them every time. So is there a way to preset my settings to not having to change them every day. Sure, and that's where there's a feature in this camera that's gonna work really well to help you with that. So you have what's called U1, U2, and U3. So once you've got your camera set up for that one specific location that you're really trying to dial in, mm. all you would need to do to save that is you press the menu button. Okay. And then in that menu button, you scroll down to the setup menu, and then in the setup menu, there'll be an option that says save user settings. So when I'm on Instagram and making a story, there are a lot of cool filters that you can use. So instead of filters, Nikon call them picture controls. So there's plenty of picture controls to choose from, and you have a pretty extensive list, all different types of colors, some without color for black and white stuff as well. But the real interesting thing is that you can really customize them. So if there's one that you like the look of, but it's not quite right, or you want to change some of the contrast, or you want to change some of the saturation in the color, you can then go to adjust, and you can adjust each picture control in this menu here. And you, again, you can adjust the brightness, the sharpness, the contrast, and so on. Okay, so I really enjoyed learning this much new stuff about my new camera. And if you did too, please make sure to watch the other videos in the series.